doing videos that are kind of strange. I haven't not been in the mood. I've been I did videos about computers and rail fanning. What's wrong with me? I should be doing N scale product reviews right now. I wonder what that's like. I forgot. Huh. Well, I normally don't do unboxings, but since this is the very first product from Scale Trains in this uh, packaging, I figure I might as well show you what it looks like on the inside when you and when you get it. Uh, comes in a standard, uh, looks like uh, maybe an HO uh, blue box kind of a style from Athern, but um, it's pretty nice looking. All the advertisement on the side. You get a an operator's manual for the tier four, and as you can see, it's got uh, kind of foldouts, um, all the information you need on it. It's in pretty small font, and with uh, these old eyes, you need some good reading glasses. All in all, you've got all the information you need right there. They package it in with some foam and then this outer shell as well. Slide it out. And it's pretty reminiscent of some HO packaging that you've seen out there from other manufacturers. And a little piece of plastic on the bottom to protect the speaker area and the fuel tank. And there you go. Got some uh, foam insert pieces here to protect the handrails. Now they come nice and easy. It does have the late PTC antenna array up on top. Uh, the early version basically was basically blank. It didn't really look like anything was there, but uh, this one is the late version. It also has a detailed cab interior, uh, tinted side cab windows, and uh, you got a Nathan Airchime K5HL R2 horn mounted uh, right up here on top of the cab. A lot of neat details you can see right here on the front. Let's take a look at the sides. Okay, on the side you can see an equally detailed model here. You have the C4 A1A trucks and they come with an idler center axle. That's the style anyway. It does have those uh, tinted cab windows on the side. You can see those. You can't really see them through there, but you when I look through there you can see some light so they're not completely blacked out. Uh, you can see the definite uh, square exhaust cabinet right up here and all the radiator vents these are all um, raised you can hear uh, as you scratch across them. The piping on here is all you know highly detailed all the brake lines you have late front and rear handrail profiles, uh, as I showed you earlier. You have a tread plate on the walkways. You can actually kind of hear the the noise there as I rub the stick across there. So they're they're kind of ribbed, they're treaded, and so that that's pretty neat. You also have factory applied grab irons everywhere. The snow plow, the Spare knuckles, uh, train line hoses, three hose MU clusters, uncoupling levers, windshield wipers, mirrors, sunshades, air tanks, brake wheel, and a lot more separately applied items on this locomotive. You don't find that a lot on any other manufacturer, and Scale Trains really raises that bar on uh, all those 
separate details that go into this model. Um, I don't have those small of hands to put all that stuff on there myself, so I'm really grateful that someone actually you know, takes that time to do all that. And as you can see on top, there's the square exhaust compartment, and you got your radiator fan grills up here, your PTC array antenna, and all the little compartments up on top. These handrails, although flexible, they are pretty uh, stiff and rugged, which is a good thing. And you can see all the detail on these uh, fuel tanks on the side. That's a 5,300 gallon fuel tank, and they also have these external waste retention tanks right up in here. Locomotive is all-wheel drive. It has dual flywheels, a motor with a five-pole skew-wound armature, printing and lettering legible under magnification, and it operates on code 55 and code 80 track. A minimum radius of nine and three quarters, but I recommended 11 inches minimum radius, and looks great on higher radiuses as well. Let's take a look at the back, and you can see all the detail on here, the rear uh, headlights, and all the handrails, uh, the coupler, MU hoses, all the painting detail on here to make it look prototypically accurate. You got a lot of good details on here. Great details, actually. On this side, you can see the manual brake wheel back here and all the railings going up to the cab, different look to the fuel tank on the side, You've got sight glasses up here for a fuel level, and all the, all the detail on these trucks are amazing. I didn't really notice that before, and you can, all the safety painting on the steps it is really really great to see that. Okay, as you can see this is a pretty good close-up of what you are going to get when you purchase yours. This looks really awesome. You can kind of see the interior of the, the cab there. No people inside, but I'm sure if you really wanted to model that you could. Let's take a look at some of this uh, lettering. Can you read that? Yeah, I'm sure you could probably read that if you really zoomed in there. Here's some uh, extreme close-up. I'm about oh, three quarters of an inch away from the camera lens. Getting some uh, extreme close-ups of the side of this loco. Maybe you can see the numbering, the lettering on some of these decals. So it's actually pretty neat that you can get that close. You can see all that detail right there. It's just awesome. Put some white on that. And so this is a PTC antenna and that whole uh, squared exhaust compartment right there. And you got your horns. So this is a very detailed model. Okay, we have here is 3786. And as it looks like basically the same front end as the other one. This is a late model. Uh, 
made in 2016. Same PTC antenna arrays up there. But as you notice, this exhaust compartment is angled versus squared off. So it has, it, it matches your radiator fan compartment right up here. And so it does stand up. You can see that exhaust port sticks up higher off the uh, compartment than the other one does. And that's one way to tell which uh, version you have. You can even see the, the D-ring or some of these uh, lift rings right up in here. Pretty neat. All these little tiny details. You just see when you get some good light on it. You know, the sunshades and uh, everything. You got mirrors here on the sides. You know, you got the, the cab hood details. Everything about this is awesome. I really like the the piping on the side. All the brake lines and everything else. You don't see that on any other model manufacturer as highly detailed as this is. Well, for the Scale Trains prototype, uh, in their paint scheme that they made for their company, you can see it's all red, and you got the Scale Trains uh, train crossing logo on the front. Uh, everything's red, 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 red. But some of the differences here is. They kind of took a lot of little pieces from the other uh, Jeevos that they made in different road names. You know, you got CSX, Norfolk Southern, and so forth. But they took pieces of it and made it into their own version of it. Um, one thing that stands out is they have the, the angled exhaust compartment back here, just like uh, the late model BNSF one that, that I just showed you. But they took a PTC antenna array from a CSX and put it on here. Um, they have some other details. Kind of hard to remember all of them, but gas tank is slightly different. Uh, at least that's painted where the BNSF one was not painted. The ditch lights are alternating ditch lights and that is like the Norfolk Southern version. Basically about the same, just kind of thrown together with different pieces to make it uh, unique just to scale trains. And it's actually going to look really nice and that's probably why I got it was because it had different um, pieces it had operating ditch lights, uh, even though I wanted BNSF to have them, they don't normally do that with their locomotives. It, it kind of has a, an element of uniqueness to it versus uh, the one I have. So, and it stands out and it looks nice. Okay, what we have here is a Kato Jivo, and it's obviously looks a little bit different than the Scale Trains one. Uh, I actually seem to have lost the snowplow. I'm not sure where it went, but the whole snowplow assembly is all uh, painted gray, the same color. They've got, you know, the headlights and everything else, no sun, sh no sun shades on the side. It looks like they have tinted windows, but they don't. It's actually just a black um, piece of plastic on the inside to make it look like it's dark. And it's the cab interior. It's pretty uh, basic. Uh, it's a simple antenna array on top. You know, there's just a little bit of color on top of this. Everything else is painted gray. No real details on the side in comparison. You know, it's just, uh, you know, rather plain. It's, it's easy to make and that's about it. You know, it's not a tier 4, it's a tier 3 probably. But it's the closest thing you can get, really, and it's, it's somewhat equivalent in uh, that it's a Jeevo. You know, details on the back. I mean, you got you do have the black MU hoses and, and so forth, but 
it really doesn't have the same detail as the scale trains does. And look at those details differences. Sure, imagine you got a snow plow there, but look at all this. That's just way more detail. Here's the sides. As you can see the difference on the sides of the trucks and the fuel tanks. And a little bit different. Night and day. I would say that uh, the scale trains version wins the detail competition because I have not seen anything like it. Not in end scale anyway. Okay, let's do a measurement of weight on number 3984 and I have 112 grams or 3.9 ounces. This Kato weighs 117 grams and 4.1 ounces so it's slightly heavier. Didn't expect that. Okay, we're going to take a look at the headlights. There's your headlights. There is a dimmer that's in there. I think it's a function 12. And as you can see, it goes dimmer. F6 is the ditch lights. And I think if I hit uh, the dimmer, it turns off the ditch lights. And here's the tail lights. On the scale trains prototype model, here's the headlights. Ditch lights. And when used with the horn, you have flashing ditch lights. As you can also see the number boards are lit up. They are lit up whenever there's track power uh, so there's no way to turn them off. I did not see an option anyway to turn them off. Okay let's do a startup sequence by pressing F8 on this ESU lock sound decoder. I believe that is the startup sequence. It takes about 35 seconds. Okay, we're going to start off doing some motor control. Let's see how it works. Go to speed step one. That's moving pretty good. Number two. Three, four, five, six, seven, and I'll we'll stop. And you can hear all those noises coming from the, the engine, all those neat, interesting noises. Let's go in reverse. So speed step one. Two. Three. Four, five, 
six, seven, and all the way to stop. That uh, worked very well. Uh, it actually was better response than I'd got from the Broadway Limited uh, locomotive that I had gotten earlier. And uh, also the Intermountain uh, was a little bit uh, touchy and it didn't seem to slow down as fast. Uh, this one actually had better control, I believe. Um, maybe not as much momentum built in, but for me, and if you want to stop soon, um, you can get that thing to slow down. That's pretty good. Let's check out some sounds that uh, this ESU decoder can uh, provide you. What about the bell? Horn. And with the horn, the bell always rings on this particular model. F3 has coupler crash. That's really loud. That's, uh, that's better than I've heard anything else out there. Do that again. And dynamic brake is F4. Probably got to be running with that. There's a DPU light mode, which is F5. There's a ditch lights, F6. F7 is not in use. Uh, F8 is your prime mover startup and shut down. Uh, F9 is a drive hold. Uh, you should check out the ESU website for information on that. F10 is a dynamic independent brake. Uh, F11 is radiator fans. F13 is an air dryer. And then we have F16, there's an air dryer on shutdown. And maybe that happens when you shut it after you shut it down. Then there's a, a brake set. Sanding valve is 18. That's F19 short air to let off. F20 is a compressor. A lot of things probably work better when the locomotive is actually running. So play with it, see how you like it. It's pulling 20 with this 2% grade, but now it's starting to get a little slippery. I'm spinning the wheels. Uh, starting to speed up a little bit. You get some momentum behind you, and you're going to about be good with this. The 20 is probably the max um, that you should pull with this one. And the wheels are slipping as it's trying to pull these up the helix. Let's bring it back down and see what uh, happens with the scale trains one. Speed this up a little bit to 30. Seems to be getting about. No, oh, it's stopping. Hmm, doesn't pull as many cars up a 2% grade as a Cotto will.
And it seems to be pulling these 16, actually 14 cars a little bit better. Still a little um, wheel slip around one section now. Okay, we've got one engine on here now. And I have 36 50-foot boxcars or reefers going all the way around. Put on 10 speed step. And it can't move. Let's see what the max is. I bet it's below 36. Thirty-one cars. But it's it sounds like it's slipping. Okay, what we did was we swapped out with the Kato Jivo and see what that can do with the same load. Thirty-one cars. Hmm, can't pull it. So it took forever for it to get going. That is surprising. Since it could pull better up the helix, but it couldn't pull better on flat surfaces. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, swap back to the scale trains, tier 4. Let's try this now. Still slipping, but at least it started pulling it right away. Get up some speed. At 40 speed steps right there. Well, that is about the limit that you probably want to pull behind a single scale trains tier 4. There you go, man cavens. That's been my long review of the Scale Trains Tier 4 Jivo in N scale. Now, if I have to give this a score, it's going to be a 15. The bar has been raised a high again. I have to get a pole vault to get even near it. There's so many details on here that have been separately applied that it's too many to count. Probably 60 of them on here. I'm not sure. I haven't, I haven't asked. But each one of them is a molded modeled piece that is painted and modeled specifically for that road number. Actual road numbers could be different depending on the generation that they're made. And you saw that with the BNSFs, two different versions. It is just unbelievable the level of detail and attention to detail that they've gone and put into these models for you, the consumer. Unreal. The only bad thing I saw was this, the pull test. It was kind of a tie. One could pull better up the helix, the other one couldn't. The other one could pull better on flat ground, the other one couldn't. So pretty much a tie. The lights and sounds, awesome. ESU lock sound knocked it out of the ballpark again. And the lights are great LEDs and just look great and function awesomely. They're going to last a long time, don't have to worry about them breaking. So I'm going to leave you with a run-by of the locomotives, and as always, Mancavians, till next time, 
Happy model railroading, and stay off those tracks. Bye. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video. Check out these videos over here. Also click on the links down below to follow me on social media. And leave a comment. Tell me what you liked. And as always, Mancavians, happy model railroading and stay off those tracks. Bye.